Okay, for question 1, charge of positive 2 microcoulomb, positive 3 microcoulomb and negative 8 microcoulomb are placed in air at the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side 10 cm. State the Coulomb's law. Okay, so the Coulomb's law state that the electrostatic force between two point charges Q and Q, uh, which are at a distance R apart, is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges R squared. Okay, for question B. Draw the vector diagram of the electric force at the negative 8 microcoulomb charge. So we can draw uh, the three charges at any point uh, of the vertices of the uh, equilateral triangle. Okay, the first one or the second triangle okay, or the third one or any triangle eh, you can draw okay so it's up to you lah okay let's say we choose the first one okay choose the point at negative 8 microcoulomb charge so the attraction force direction we call it F1 uh, attraction force between negative 8 microcoulomb charge and positive 2 microcoulomb charge. We call this F2. Then we transfer these two forces to the Cartesian plane without changing the angles. So the angles of the equilateral triangles uh, is 60 degrees. So draw the parallel parallelogram to determine the resultant force Fr. Okay, C. Uh, calculate the magnitude of the force acting on the negative 8 microcoulomb due to the other two charges. So we calculate F1 first. F1 is between negative 8 microcoulomb charge and positive 3 microcoulomb charge. So we substitute the value of negative 8 microcoulomb and positive 3 microcoulomb charge divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. The distance between them is uh, 10 cm. So F1 we get 21.57 newton. Next we find F2. F2 is between the charge uh, negative 8 microcoulomb and positive 2 microcoulomb. So we substitute these two values into the equation and the distance same 10 cm. So we get 14.38 newton. Okay, now we resolve the component of uh, F1 and F2. F1 only have one component, which is F along x axis. F1 is horizontal, so just F1. F along y axis is zero. For F2, the component eh, is F2 cos 60 degrees for along x axis. F along uh, y axis is F2 sine 60 degrees. Use trigger ratio to determine these two values, two component of F2. Then we total the F along X axis. So F1 plus F2 cos 60 degrees. We substitute F1 and F2 into the equation. And we get the answer 28.76 Newton. For F along Y axis, okay, the total is 0 plus F2 sine 60 degrees. Substitute F2 into the equation. 
then we get 12.45 newton okay now we have the component fx and fy then we can find the resultant using Pythagoras theorem so substitute into the Pythagoras theorem f resultant is 31.3 newton Okay, how we get this 31.3 Newton from Pythagoras theorem? 28.76 to the right because we got positive and 12.45 Newton is upward because also we get positive. So we, that's why we get 31.3 Newton. The resultant force is 31.3 Newton. So to find the direction, we can use tangent theta. 12.45 per 28.76 use trigo ratio so we get theta 23.4 degrees so that's the answer for question 1